Good evening. Welcome to Shadow Baptist Church Bible Study on Wednesday night. This is Pastor Duncan for the Pastor's Bible Study. And we need you to know that we are in the process, as you notice, we're live. Hallelujah. We're live tonight. Um, let our folk know that we are live on Facebook now. We're going to have to get this to uh, YouTube on a later time. So call us to both and let them know we're only on Facebook right now. And then we're going to actually swing it over to our other station. So as you can tell, there was some technical things we had to deal with, but we're here. So those of you that are here, I'm going to give you a few moments. Just text out. Send out a text, a chat. Let somebody know Bible study is on. There is a powerful word of Bible study tonight. I'm ending this series on how to be safe. Somebody out there needs this. How to stay secure. How to be assured that God is in control. It's very simple, so I'm going to go to that. But let me make this announcement. One of the reasons we're live is so I can share with you that we're restructuring our Bible study. This will be the last Bible study until June. We're going to be off for about four weeks. Then we're coming back on. And we're going to restructure. You're going to love the restructure because we did reopen um, our church on Palm Sunday. So we are reopened in our Port Norris location and our violent location. Come on, let me pray. You pray with me. And I want you to grab your devices, grab your Bibles. We're going right to a powerful word of God. You'll hear more about the restructuring at the end of uh, this Bible study. I want to get to the word. But my man, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to pray while you chat out and let other folk know that they can get on right now. It's different. We don't have our music kicking out the opening, but live I get a chance to talk to you. So let's pray right now. Go with me in a word of prayer. Somebody at home needs a word of prayer. Then we're going into the word. Father God, I thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your help. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us as long as you have kept us. And Lord, even today, if someone is stressed, if someone is lost, if someone is thinking they don't have help, let them know, God, that you made a promise that you would always be near, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Let them know you're not forsaken because we have a God on our side. And I thank you for what you're going to do tonight, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. You have it? Hebrews chapter 12. Powerful, powerful passage. Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such great contradiction of sinners against him, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. Oh, that's good. Listen, faint in your minds. That's what I'm talking about tonight. If you want to get this, you have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So tonight, somebody needs to get to catch this because this is our fourth week in a third week study. We're going to conclude tonight from Hebrews 12 with this song. There it is. Run your race. This very powerful passage of scripture is going to talk to us about the obstacles, the ups, the downs, the struggles during our race. So let me just kind of get you where we are 
in his text. What we found out is that God pursues with us a, let me, let me get to where I need to get. All right, so what we've been talking about is you are, sanctification is your safety. Don't lose me there. Someone said, how do I go through my weak moments? I gotta get sanctified. We found out as I press, as I sanctify, we talked to you about what sanctification was. There's no safety in anything but you getting closer to God. So the first point we told you about was that you have to get closer. We talked about 2 Corinthians, and if you look at the verse, it tells you 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Write that scripture down. You're going to need that scripture. It talks about us going from glory to glory. We never stay in one place, not because of our strength. God's plan is glory to glory. I'm telling somebody right now, you're going higher. Somebody needs to say, I'm going higher. You know what happens? Every day, God is taking us higher. We just have to go along for the ride. That's called our sanctification. As we realize, I was saved at a certain point, but I'm getting better every day. Can I bless somebody going through a stress right now? Your latter days will be better than your former days. Your latter years are going to be better. So, Pastor, how can you make that, you know, Confession. How can you do that? Well, I'm not making the confession for you. I'm making it because that's what the Word of God says. God takes us from better to better to better. You can be crippled and broke down and have a better life because God knows how to keep us intact. So we found out that we have to understand what sanctification is. There are three tenses to sanctification. It's up there. Your positional sanctification. That's why you're getting better. As soon as I got saved, my new life in Christ put me in a position to be filled with the power of God and to do what I need to do. Everybody listening to me, while you're listening to Bible study, hoping to get a nugget, if you would just start confessing what you need right now. How do you think you made it as far as you made it now? It was not some magic bullet or a prayer you said two weeks ago. You're positionally in a place where God is going to make sure your life is better. And just think, how much better it would be if you added on your own push of your sanctification. And secondly, progressive sanctification. That means that we have to get better progressively. We progress toward our sanctification. Then there is ultimate sanctification. Ultimate sanctification is a sanctification that is going to occur when we finally get to glory. That is our ultimate sanctification. So what's the problem? Well, Mark, chapter 8, verse 34, 35 tells us we have a sanctification gap. A lot of people don't, a lot of people miss this. You have to go after God because God is already coming after you. Do you know by the time you turn to God and say help, he already was ready to help you before you turned to him for help, but you waited till the moment that you felt like it was time to call help, and God was saying, hey, I've been waiting on you. I got what you need. I got your deliverance. I have the blessing you need. It's in my hand, and there is no force out there that can stop that power. So understand something. This is, this is theology. You are positionally sanctified. Nothing can take you out of God's hands. Hallelujah. You are then progressively sanctified. I know sometimes we go two steps forward and one step back, but you are progressively sanctified. You're going to get better, and the closer you get is going to be a testament to the Word of God that said there will be an ultimate sanctification. The ultimate sanctification is when God takes away all of our earthly desires. When we get to heaven, the text says we don't know what we shall be, but we shall be like Him. How do I continue these tenses of sanctification? Watch me. This will blow your mind. Because of justification. Write it down. A lot of times we say something like, it's just as if I never sinned. Well, that's not really true. Justification is the beating and the whooping that Jesus took on your behalf. Can you imagine all the sins in the world, not just yours, multiply and from 
on and on and on, and ad phenomenon, and all these sins were added up, placed on the back of Jesus. He was whooped, and do you know why he's so so safe, so safe in him? Because he voluntarily justified us. I am living in the grace of his justification. That means that as soon as I accepted him as Savior, I was justified to get closer to him. Then there is sanctification, which we just talked about. After I'm justified, I've got to move to sanctification. Then there is glorification. That is the moment, and you have, stay with me, watch this. There's some moments in your life where you feel God so close. Maybe it's a moment of tears. Maybe it's a moment of stress where you call on God and you begin to talk to God like he was sitting in the next room next to you. I want you to know that's your spirit. That's your spirit telling me, God, I'm being who I said I need to be. When we allow ourselves to be taken away from our spirit, it means that the enemy is treading on God's territory. <laughs> you are God's territory. The weakness, we're going to get into why sometimes there is a weakness in your life. And then we said, what happens? How do I get justification, sanctification, glorification? All right, I'm going to make it simple because we found out God is always working around you. I don't have time to talk about that. I did. But we're going to look at this. God pursues a continuing um, love relationship with you. God pursues a continuing love relationship with you. So how do I do that, Pastor? You run your race. Look at me and say, I tuned in tonight because I'm going to learn how to run my race. And that's what you have to do right now. Run the race that God has set before you. So how do we do that? We're going to look at Hebrews. Go back to your Bible. This is a Bible study. God told me to place some stuff within you tonight. Listen to the power in the word of God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, chapter 1. Let's look at the verse. This will blow your mind. This will run every demon out of your life. I feel somebody get feeling it right now. This is going to put you on a place no matter how down you are. You know what happens when I say the sanctification gap is when we don't press after God? It's when you turn over illegitimately what belongs to God to the enemy. There are not be times in your life where you are totally hopeless. You notice I didn't say there are going to be times when you are hopeless. But there should never be times when you are totally hopeless. Not as long as you can realize the price that was paid for you to get in the position that you're in. Hebrews is the perfect text for showing us how to press on. I'm going to help somebody right now. How do I press on, Pastor? Right now, you tuned in so God could relieve you of some of the darkness and some of the oppression and some of the things the enemy has lied to you about. He lied. He lied. You're not weak. He lied. You're not sick and you're going to stay sick. He lied. You're not too helpless. He lied. Just because you messed up this week, that's why you got to understand justification. God will never leave us to ourselves. Hallelujah. I am so grateful. God never let me to figure out on my own. We act like sometimes that our God is this God too big in the sky to come down and see about us. And then we get into a terrible situation and begin to scream and holler for God when he was there all the time. And we don't understand that when we do this, we forget the very principle that made Jesus come down and die for you now. Oh, God is telling me, I'm speaking directly into someone's life right now. Let these words take on new power in Hebrews 12. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every sin, the weight and every sin that does easily he said us. Let's think about that. We are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. Whenever you see the word wherefore, you go back to the prior statement. I know I'm talking to Bible folk. You know this. And what this is doing is bridging the gap between chapter 11 and chapter 12. Chapter 11 is the faith chapter. Chapter 12 is the chapter where that 
faith, the examples that we saw, we live out in our life. So we are accomplished to doubt. Wherefore, God is saying, since. Don't you sit there and weep, since. Don't you dare give up any ground, since. Don't let the devil have your children. Don't let the enemy have your mind. Don't let the enemy have your stuff. Since you're accomplished to doubt with so great a cloud of witnesses, not just the witnesses, that are around you. You see other people who have gone through struggles and they're okay. That's not the witnesses he's pointing us to. He says, since you are accomplished to that, listen to me. In the spirit realm, there are witnesses telling us we can make it. This text is telling us that those who have gone through, those who have gone on by faith, have blessed us because they're watching over us. We're accomplished to that with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every way. Let's look at some of the witnesses they're talking about. Go, go to chapter 11. We're not going to look at all of them, but I want you to see something. If you go to Hebrews 11, you will find out that it talks about Abel, uh, Adam and Eve's child that was righteous, an unrighteous king, but Abel held on to his righteousness. We're talking sanctification. Uh, a lot of folk, you want the power without the work. You want the pity without looking for what you need to repent from. See, we don't make a correlation between, somehow we think, if good things happen to that person, it means that person is just blessed and they're just lucky. But if bad things happen to me, I'm, I, I have to pity myself. No, please hear me. If good things happen to anybody, if blessings happen to anybody, if God showed favor to anybody, they were walking and pressing their way. When you try to say the conclusion of the matter is, since my life is going bad, I must be going through some hard times. You've heard saints say that. This is hard times. This is tough stuff for me. And God is saying, no. Everybody's going through tough times. You just have to realize that like everybody else, you have to press through your struggles. Somebody give me, somebody give me a chat room and let somebody know. Can you put an amen right there and you would tell somebody, you just don't know my story. It's got nothing to do with it easy. I have cried many a night. I have I've been at the edge. I've been at the place where I said, not you, Pastor. I've been at the edge where I wanted to give up. Any saint work they saw will tell you right now, oh, when I look back over the stuff I've overcome, I knew that there was the power of God in my life. I want to give you something fresh on that thought. So I want you to, from now on, when you see a deficit in your worship, stay with me. When you see a deficit in your walk, when there's something you know God said is yours, Instead of just going back, questioning God, thinking God let you down somehow, go back and say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sanctify myself like the witnesses who got blessed. Look at the text. In 11, I don't have to tell you about Noah and all those, but let's just look at the part of this text that is inquisitive to me. Can you go down to uh, verse 30? Let's start at verse 30. Ah, oh, here it is. Verse 32. Go to verse 32. Now listen to this text. He's talked about Rahab. He talked about Joshua. He talked about all the folk we know that are in the hall of faith, right? There's actually 18 names in this text of faithful people who are the witnesses now in glory, watching over us, telling us, run your race. We ran ours. Somebody said we run your race. They say I'm going to run my race. Come on, I need you with me. Run your race. Not my, my neighbor's race. Not my pity race. Not, I'm going to run the race set before me. These are the, this is the hand I have. But with God, I can change anything with the power of his word. But look at verse 32. Kind of inquisitive. And what shall we say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jether, and of David, also of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lying. How did he do it? Come on, your Bible study, through faith. How did he do it? Through faith. And what I like about the fact that they did it through faith, let's go back to the list God gave us. 
And it, you might not even see this. Come on, this is a revelation. That's why you need to see this. And what more shall we say of Gideon? Gideon? How did Gideon get into the hall of faith? He was always doubting God's word, always needed God to show him a sign. And yet, in the end, he turned around and was faithful to what God wanted him to do. What am I telling you that for? Because I want you to see, when God says faith, he's not talking about perfection. The devil lied to you. There is nobody, I don't care how big a preacher is, I don't care how many people you got in this church, I don't care how long you've been a deacon, I don't care how many tongues you speak in, I don't care how many times you just shouted, and your eyes roll back in your head, and all the other stuff that happened in your life, you need to realize something. None of us are perfect, but Jesus' spirit is. Aren't you glad God is saying Gideon can be in the Hall of Faith? I'm trying to show you what kind of faith it takes to press on. Not only Gideon, watch this, and Barak. Remember Barak would not even fight without Deborah. God still said, well, he was faithful, but he had to wait for Deborah before he would act on the ability within him. We know Samson. Samson gave into his flesh. He gave into the idol. He died in a terrible situation. You never thought about that? How did he get into the hall of faith? He is one of the witnesses telling you that if God can take somebody like me and use me for his glory, he's going to take you and use you for his glory. Somebody better wake up. You better sit up. God is ready to use you for his glory. Jephthah made a bad vow. After going out fighting the Ammonites, he made a vow that lost him his daughter. David slept with Bathsheba, messed up his family, and Samuel had rotten children. Come on. These things fit all of us. Somebody get a shout right now. And yet God said they still acted in faith. Look at verse 35. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and accepted, not accepting deliverance. Torture. I don't have time. Not accepting deliverance. I'm not going to accept a deliverance that takes me away from God. Don't cheat yourself. Don't take the drink. Don't take the drug. Don't, don't cop out. Uh, take your self-esteem and give it to somebody because you feel bad. Stand your ground. Don't be what other people say you're not. Watch this. They were sown. They were sown in half. Uh, they were tempted. They were slain. I'm going to get down to the bottom of this. It said, and all these, having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. God having some better thing for us. That's what I was trying to get to. All those people heard a promise, stood in faith, were not heard a promise, but never saw it. You better catch it. We should be better because we have heard the promise and we have, we have the faith. We don't have to worry about it what God is doing. Right now, we are those who have seen the promise of Jesus. We've seen his miracles. Can I see the hands in the chat of all the folk that you can really literally say, come on, get out the dumps, you saw the miracle. Now, you know, we would like to come back to this place, you know, I am a miracle, but that's cool. But think back to the things you have escaped that had to be miraculous. Come on, if you're there, put it in the chat, let somebody know, it's a miracle that I'm still here. It's a miracle I survived that last situation. It's a miracle that God did not throw me away. Okay, I know nobody wants to, you know, count up to that. But it's a miracle. Here's a good one. I did not lose my mind. Where the hands? Come on, all the folks. We had to fight through our thoughts. Come on. There were some days when we were riding through traffic, and there were some days we were trying to get to work, or some days we were coming home. You ever been in one of those funks where you get right into the middle of the if it, it, life, you, you get right to the middle of nothing is working right. And you feel yourself saying, like, what's the use of where I am right now? It's one of those spirits that come on me, like, no excitement about life. And here's what God is saying. You just forgot who you are. I got to move quicker. It says, come to that with so great a cloud of witnesses. Remember also Psalms 91, 11, and 12. Write that down. We are also compassed about with angels. That is a blessing. I'm going to give you two verses so you see that Bible. Exodus 23 and 20 says, I'm sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way 
and it bring you to the place I have prepared. Angels, Psalms 91, 11 and 12, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. In their hands, they'll bear you up. Listen, listen to me. That's why you're safe when you press. He said, okay, therefore, since we got all these weapons, all these angels, all these folks watching over us, and I don't know if it's actually people in heaven looking down watching us, but if, I know definitely God is calling them witnesses for what we've gone through. And then he said, we have to lay aside every weight. I need you to look at your Bible. Weight and sin. Some of you are victims of your weights. All weights are not sin, but weights can turn into sin. Okay, let me explain it to you. Sin is when we know that we break the, the law of God through our actions, our thoughts, or how we treat someone else, right? But weights are when we are free and we allow things in our life to catch a ride. I'm free. And, and so here's a way. So here's a blessing here God has for me. Here's a promotion God has for me. Here's that deliverance I prayed for, I prayed for three years ago. But my weights have come on me. What is my weight? Anger can be a weight. Anger can be a sin. But when you just have an angry disposition and an angry personality, it's a weight. Bitterness can be a weight. Envy, jealousy. Now, somebody said, well, there could be sins too. Yeah, what I'm talking about is personality flaws, things that stop you from running your race. Pity can be a, a weight that stops me from getting where God wants me to be. All I'm saying to you is, you're sitting here now, you're one of those Christians, shout a little bit, and you were on fire. What happened to you? How did you get so down now? How did everything that happened just scares you? When you know it's the weight and the sin. I'll tell you, Proverbs 23, 7, right again. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinketh, so is he. That's not what it says. I did that on purpose. It says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I'm getting ready to tell you something. Jesus called Scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Hypocrites were actors. He said on the outside, you look pristine and you look sanctified. Your outside cannot really tell us what's going on on the inside. Come on, you know this. I don't have to explain this. You've been sitting somewhere and we are so glad folk don't know my inside world based on my outside world. Some of us look like we're strong Christians. I would pick you out to go into a spiritual battle with me. But man, I only can see the outside. I don't know what's on the inside. I was telling somebody today, that's why you can see somebody, they're a serial killer living right next door to you. But then somebody cut the grass, they smiled at you, they barbecued, that they were taking care of their kids. That was their outward world. But that was not the real them. They were playing a part. Many of you, thank you, Holy Spirit, are playing a part. You're, you want to you wanna listen to Bible study and play like you tough instead of being tough. You want to be, but you got those weights coming on you because as you think, here's the real you, in your heart. So is he. There is to all of us an inside thought and an in outside thought. Our inside world really drives our outside world. You got to make up your mind which one you're really going to listen to. You know what happens when you, when you get to a crisis? You know when you when you get to um, somebody said, "I'm having one of those moments. I'm having a crisis moment. It is cognitive dissonance. It is I feel like one thing, but I'm not the same." God is saying that's because you have not gotten yourself to the place where you took away your weights, where you really and truly tried to forget sin. Just live like a good person. That's the problem. Then he said the sins that so easily beset us. I'm just going through Hebrews telling me how to be sanctified. 
Somebody there you have, you need to sit down after this Bible study. I had to do it. Write down some of your weights. What are some of your weights? I was selfish. Um, I could get angry. I could get angry like that. Um, I would say stuff and then later regret it when the Holy Spirit got, come on, I'm not by myself. Come on, that's up. And so, if we're going to get to the place that we run our race, Hebrews 12 is telling us, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and run this race with patience, endurance, endurance. Uh, patience means be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. You can't be endure for two days and give up on the third day. You have to continually learn to endure. Here's how endurance works, guys. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but I'm going to be honest with you. Endurance is what happens after I had that elation of, of, of salvation. I got a victory. And when I come down crashing, I got to get ready for the next battle. Yep, I just hit you. You're sitting there wanting to think stuff is unfair. And let me, let me not just say the next battle. There were three, four, five, six battles in a row. God said, endure. Watch this. And he gives us a reason to endure. This is so good. It, it's, it's like, I get rid of weights, I get rid of sins. He said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Endurance is done by remembering I'm getting closer to God. Endurance is done by remembering I'm not good without God. Amen, somebody. I'm, how many people know I'm not good without God? I, I, I can't do anything without God. Endurance is when I sit there and say, I don't know what God is doing, but I tell you what, if I follow his word, I'll be better off than I am right now. You better take that to the bank. You better believe that tonight. Endurance is like going to the dentist. Hear that drill? And, or the needle, right? All I'm telling you is you endure because you're going to come out with a perfect smile or you're going to come out with less pain. I always use the example that if you wait to go to the dentist while you have pain, it's going to take pain to relieve your pain. But if you go to the dentist to prevent the pain, you grow to the point that you begin to look at the dentist another way. You start looking, I don't want a jacked up smile. I don't want a, a smile and a breeze blow through my mouth. I got to get this taken care of. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. Get your teeth fixed. You can buy teeth. Get some. Everybody write me. Everybody get mad at me. All I'm saying is you have to learn how to endure, and how we do it is looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. It is God who blesses us through. Now, let me watch this, because this is actually broken down into four areas. I'm only going to do two more because it's the essence of time, but I want you to hear what it says. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Arthur. Wow. Sound like he wrote your faith. Finisher. Wow. Sound like he's going to finish it if you just hang in there. He's the author. He wrote enough faith in your life for you to handle every circumstance that you go through. And you say, oh, I hear that word, but I don't know. Well, answer me this question. How are you still here with the hell you already been through? No, 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 don't choke out now. Answer me. With all those tears you cried, with those unmovable obstacles, with those situations that they would never work out, with that night you just said, I can't take no more, how are you still taking it? Understand me, y'all. God is not crazy enough to leave us to ourselves. He wants us to progress in our sanctification because we will have more power as we run our race. But he also knows he's the author and the finisher. Know what that means? When you turn around, God's going to have more power. I feel an anointing right now. Isn't it something that God will be hovering over the world? See your heart. Stop. 
send an anointing down into your room to help you make it through the night. Somebody got to thank him. Isn't this something that he will read your thoughts, read your heart. Before you even know you have a need, he will supply, run your race. Somebody say keep running, keep running, keep running. I think I better pull this chair a little closer because if I fall, all the anointing going to leave the room and you guys are going to lag. So I'm not going to try to fall. But let me continue. Watch this. Why do we have to look under Jesus? He is the author and finisher of our faith. Go back to the word. Go back to the word. That's what set you free. He said, look what he did. Who for the joy that was set before him despised the shame and endured the cross and is set down at the right hand of the Father. I don't have time. So think. Jesus did all of this so I could live. He endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now sat down at the right hand of the Father. What an awesome Savior we have. Because Jesus endured for us, and now he is the author and finisher of our faith. For consider him, and said we have to strive unto blood. But I wanted to get to this part. Um... Don't despise chastising in your life. God is going to beat you to stop you. We don't like to use the term beating now because, you know, we got all this politically correct stuff. But the Bible said that if you forgo, I'm going to tell you, uh, you want to get a, a husband that won't respect you, you want to get something. When you don't add discipline into your speech. The first time somebody disrespects you, wife, husband, whoever, discipline. Now, you can't beat your wife, no, but the word discipline means let people know I'm not standing for that. That's discipline. Uh, when, when the devil encroaches on your gift, let the devil know I'm not standing. I'm not taking you coming into my house. You got to whoop him upside his head every time he tries to come into your life. And you gotta learn to discipline because when we don't discipline, there is no blessing. Can I say this right here? There's no blessing without discipline. I did not like the fact that my, my, my mother and father believed in discipline, and a lot of people I'm talking to believe in discipline. But just so we don't wear this thought out, let me explain to you something I witnessed that lets me know you've got to have discipline. I was in a supermarket. We were walking in. These two kids were standing next to their mom. They snatched a $20 bill out of her hand, each of them, and started running over the store. Now, wait a minute. Here's what the mom did. Come back. Come back here. Come back. Can somebody say that's not my mom? <laughs> Can somebody say that ain't what my mom would do? But as we saw the lady, she was helpless. Y'all get back there. And kids were just laughing and running all over the store, just embarrassing their mother. Well, we came in because the lady had no baby sitting in the car. I'll never forget myself, and there was another woman. I went to an aisle, blocked that aisle off of that little joker. I don't know if I do it now, but I grabbed him up. I was taking him to his mom, and he was trying to squirm. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I did, but I put a little extra pressure. Around my waist, I was carrying like this. I made sure they jumped in there. Be still. I didn't hurt him. But nobody locked me up with child support. I mean, child abuse. But I, I grabbed him and I took him back to his mom. The other lady did the same thing. But she was different. She didn't grab him. She just snatched him up and he was dragged, took him back. And this lady was a real mom. She said, Apologize to your mom. And, yeah, baby. And I used to, you have to apologize to your mom. And then, I'm sorry, but give your mom the money back. And he finally did. We walked away at this case. No, they are monsters you created because you didn't stop them and discipline them beforehand. I came from a family that if your mama gave you the look, first of all, understand what I mean. You lined up because they it was like Sinai. Tell me your look. That look meant you gonna get a beat when you get home. How many of you ever got that look? I'm not putting up with your attitude any longer. That was the queen, the other mother. Is that? Let me, let me, let me say this. Everything looks good. Let me say this. Watch this. For whom the Lord loves, he chastises. So God said, 
I only meet you because I love you. Sorry. Our mom and dad, huh? So when you don't beat someone, when you don't chastise, I'll, I'll quit using the word beat because your ears are too sensitive, but when you don't chastise your child, get it ready for a child that's going to be out of control. God chastises us. It doesn't look good while he's doing it, but the end result is the discipline in life that's going to make us better. I read an illustration where a gentleman was talking about the discipline of God was like when he was riding his bicycle down a hill full speed and it was getting more speed and getting more speed. And as he got down to the bottom, he said, I'm going to let this bike just go. Wouldn't put on the brakes. Well, he had to turn a curve and as he was turning with all that speed, flew off the bike, scraped up his knees and his arms all because he would not put on the brakes. Listen to me. The reason you and I aren't scraped up, being scraped off, is because of breaks when we would not put on. It's about our earthly fathers. Let me get down to the end so I can, so I can take us through. Because it gives us now how we run our race. It says, or we know that, go down and read verse 16. For you are not come. Uh, verse 17 tells the blessing of discipline, right? Verse 16 now goes back theologically to us understanding New Testament versus Old Testament Christians. Uh, Christians. Exodus 19 it says, You have not come to the mount that can't be touched and burned. Remember when Moses actually took the children of Israel to the mount to hear God, and they were scared to death. And the Bible says even Moses was scared as he was listening to God because God was speaking to them out of fire instead of how he speaks to us. He said, no, we come to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is a mountain where God's peace, God's joy, God's purpose, God's energy is in Mount Zion. So look what it says. We are blessed enough to be able to run our race because we have a God. I want to read the verse because it even says it. We've come to the living God, verse 22, the heavenly Jerusalem, and a numeral company of angels to the general city of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and that God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. But this verse is the verse that tells Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. Whenever this is powerful. I've been to the place that I have messed up so badly. I don't know how to say this to make it. You, you know the sincerity upon which I'm talking. I know that God had been so good to me. I messed up so badly. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That I'm, I'm shaking my head like, how do you forfeit the goodness and the blessing of God after God has done all that, how do you get to the point that you forfeit by doing actions that you know hurt God? That's how deeply our flesh comes against God. We need a mediator. But hallelujah, you have. Say this with me. I have a mediator. I want somebody to know you have a mediator Someone, a mediator is just, uh, in our terminology, an attorney, someone, a mouthpiece, someone who speaks to us. Every time, can you, can you imagine this? Every time your life goes down, every time you go through a period of darkness, struggle or suffering, even as you're pressing, gotta be pressing, gotta be pressing. God is up in heaven saying, see God? Yep, that's, that's what I paid for, this is Jesus. I, I paid for that. Um, yep, I knew she was gonna do that, I knew he was gonna do that. So send them down energy anyway. God continually tells Jesus, send them the blessing. It's unbelievable. He doesn't think like us. God says, take that jacked up man, take that jacked up woman, take those people and send them the blessing anyway. And some of you right now, you ought to shout for the send me the blessing anyway times that have come in your life. And you know something else? Those times could be now if you make up your mind, I will run my race as they said to do here in the book of Hebrews. Let's get to the last verse. This is such a powerful. 
text, I can't read it all, but it talks about, and the word of God, uh, things are going to be shaken, verse 27. But it says, things that are made by God cannot be shaken. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom that cannot be moved. He tells us, in Hebrews, the writer, we don't know who the writer was. He took us to an Old Testament understanding of our mediator and having a better covenant. I want to suggest to you tonight that you are invincible. Okay, I'm going back to it because I, I felt God just telling me to go back to it. Because you got to check some Proverbs 23, 7 in your life. you got to change your thought life and your speaking life internally so it will affect your external. you got to do it. You're stronger than, you're only as strong as you think. You only can get through what you think. You can listen to this Bible study all night long and I can share with you these nuggets of power from the Holy Spirit. God sent the Holy Spirit to empower us. God sent the Holy Spirit to make us different. God sent the Holy Spirit so we could be special. You are anointed. I can't say it anymore. You're anointed. You're powerful. That's why God said you can run this race. He's giving us the formula for getting to where we need to get to so we can bless. We will have progressive sanctification. And the closer I get to God, the more I see his power because I press through everything else. So we're going to end this study covering that sanctification gap, justification, sanctification. Everybody look forward. You, you, you've, been, you've been to, you know, theological, you, you had a theological study in some words that are the cornerstones and the foundations of our salvation. Justification. He did, not you. But now he gave you the power. Sanctification. I'm positionally sanctified, but I press, I go higher. Glorification. At the end, I'm going to be just, that's something to look forward to. I don't know what I will be, but I'll be like him. So, God always works in us. God pursues a continuing love relationship. That's what we just talked about. Run your life. Let's close with that tonight so you can see what I mean. God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that is real and personal. God is your personal God. He wants to get personal with you. God does not want you to be a church person. He doesn't want you to be a Christian person. He wants you to be in a love relationship with him. God created us for a love relationship with him. More than anything else, God wants us to learn how to be in that relationship. So everything God does is so we can move through a period of having a love relationship with him. Matthew 22, 37. Write this down. I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures as we close tonight. And I want you to write it down because it's something you can solidify this Bible study in your heart. You have it? God is telling us in Matthew 22, 37. He said, to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Somebody said, how do I get freedom, Pastor? Love the Lord thy God. Get closer to God. Not only that, 1 John 2, 15, 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Can I take you through an ESV translation of that? Right? For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. All the things you can desire in the world. You know, when a rich, when a, when a fool gets rich, he soon loses his riches or not satisfied because his thought life and his um, purity and his desire to press didn't go with him. That's why you see a lot of folk who make it come tumbling down because once they make it, they have no character to hold them there. And it's the reason God can't not connect some blessings to us because we have to suffer through some things. Don't give up. Press on and run our race. And Deuteronomy 10, 
and in 12. Write these texts down as we go through. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But for you to fear your Lord, walk in his ways, to love him, and serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Let's close. How do I, how do you, become more powerful? How do you walk in a world where you know for sure the ground that I'm walking on is going to hold me? How do you get to the place to know I can't self-destruct because of who I am? You got to claim this. It's through the process I gave you. Watch this. Sanctification. You are already positionally sanctified. Then you got to realize how I got there. Progressive sanctification means I got to push. Glorification means I will reach a place of ultimate sanctification. Ultimate is when God says you're, you're finished, you're ready to race. How do I get there? I got to remember that I am justified. And when I'm justified, I can get closer to God. Wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so many witnesses, why don't you do that? Lay aside every weight and sin that does easily beset you and run with patience, endurance, the race before you. Let's pray. Come on. So I want you to put in the chat that this lesson blessed you, and I want you to study Hebrews 12 on your own, looking at it in the fact of, you know what? I have total security after what Jesus did. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the word. Thank you for someone's heart may be hurting. Thank you, God, for the blessing that you have given us tonight through this study. And bless everyone that heard it and allow them to realize that because of who you are, they now have been placed in a position to glory in you. Amen. God bless you tonight. I'm going to have to turn some music. We turn some music on up here so we can close this thing out. You can't even use music on, can you? We just got some technical stuff. Can you get no music on in that? All right, we're going to go through. I'm going to have no music. But here's what, I want to, here's what I want to say to everyone. Don't forget, let someone know that we will be restructuring our 7 o'clock Bible study for the month of May. We'll be back the month of June. But don't fear. Go to our website. Go to Facebook. Go to Instagram. Our handle is SBC Praise Church. SBC, the letters. Praise Church. And when you go there, you'll see we have an 8 o'clock early morning word. Man, the minister of the Shiloh Baptist Church is so powerful, giving you a word every morning to encourage you. And then there's also uh, our young people, our young adults, have a word to encourage you. We have a Zoom Bible study. We have two Bible studies that go into the day. The right to church will send you the information to get into those studies. We have our Sunday morning worship service, which continually goes on. There is a lot going on at Shiloh Baptist Church as we restructure Bible study to reflect on and to take us into the place that God is taking us now. This Pastor Duncan is saying, you're blessed. Please take this study to heart. Somebody tell me, I'm going to run my race. Not stopping. Not getting off. I'm going to keep looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of my faith. God bless you. Please put in the chat. And, um, we'll see you next